Subaru Outbacks and Foresters Off-Road. So many people underrate these vehicles. Now, I actually owned a Subaru Outback. And it was a 1995 model that had the, v, uh, the flat four boxer engine in it, automatic, beautiful car. And we owned it when, when our boys were young and we weren't able to do much full driving, but it allowed us to go and do some basic camping and stuff. The thing is, they're a very underrated four-wheel drive. Well, they're not even really a four-wheel drive, but a four-wheel drive for what they are. Is it going to go and keep up with a twin lock something or other on 35s? No, but it, it is amazing what they can do. So in this video, we're gonna to react to some fellas and these guys are just out having a whole heap of fun and they're doing it in their Subaru. So good on them. I, uh, I quite yes, yes, enjoy yes, yes. This, this watch. Now, the thing about this is you might be thinking, oh yeah, but you know, it's, it's not extreme action. Well, it is when you're in a Subaru. <laughs> Okay, and it, the thing is, it still takes a lot of driving skill to get this level of vehicle up this track. My race car would go up this track at 40, 50 k an hour without even breaking sweat. A stock, a fairly standard sort of Subaru has to work at it. Oh my God, oh my God. How do you feel? Stress. <laughs> the thing is this, from a driver's perspective, and this is where it matters in my opinion, from a driver's perspective, you can have as much fun doing this as you can when you've got your big lifted patrol or Land Cruiser or whatever it is, okay? This is all about the driver and what's more, these guys learn to drive these vehicles off-road. You go and stick them in a bigger truck, they will be very competent drivers straight up because they've, they're having to learn the utmost fundamentals of picking their line, using their throttle, and, and just working the vehicle to make it get up the climb. So they're, they're, they're going to be very competent drivers. Well, they possibly already are, but in this video, they do a good demonstration of it. There's a lot I've got to say about it. So let's do a reacts and see what we can learn from this. Look, I'm not... Oh, sorry, I can't, I can't stop falling down the hill. <laughs> sorry, mate, go on. Look, he's trying to fill me with confidence. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I'm still not 100% confident. <laughs> make a goal to get halfway to that clearing halfway. What do yeah. you reckon? and then make, it, make an assessment from there. It's gonna be sketchy trying to get reverse down it. Yeah, make it or... Make it or break it, yeah, Make it or break it. <laughs> okay, so this is an interesting one. Now I'm reading between the lines a little bit here because there's obviously a bunch of backstory that I'm not privy to, but I get the feeling that um, the gentleman who was just chatting then is feeling quite pressured to get up this climb. Now, it could be pressure he's putting on himself. It could be pressure his his other mates are putting on him. I think his name's Troy, now that I think about it. Um, and, um, you know, so he's feeling a lot of pressure. Now, when I'm trip leading, I've got people like that are feeling the pressure. I always want people to stretch themselves, but I never want them to stretch themselves to a place where they're damaging their vehicles or feeling like they're unsafe or, or whatever. So I want to push them, but not too hard. and. Um, because I want people to have the victory that we're about to see Troy have, where he goes, I didn't, I didn't have the confidence, I didn't think I could do it, but with good coaching and, and, um, and good um, leadership and, and spotting, he gets up this hill and he does a pretty good job of it, to be honest. And so, yeah, so just be aware of that if you're a trip leader. And if you're a, on a trip and you've, you're starting to feel some peer pressure coming at you, you don't have to listen to it. It's your vehicle, it's your drive, you own it, and don't let people push you into something you're not comfortable doing, okay? So let's continue. Just sacrifice the horsepower and put the aircon on. Oh. <laughs> Des is a better spotter than me. Okay, so Des, Des here in the, in the white shirt, or the singlet, he actually sent this video in to me, and, um, and so he actually drives a, a Subaru Forester, and we see his drive later on in the video. <laughs> you keep saying that. One day someone will roll and it'll be me yeah. on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you spotted them into you a You can roll. tell that the three good mates good just having a good day nice out with them. Okay. With a hint of tropical passion for it, mate. Oh, mate, guys, if you're not mm. familiar, Troy's Outback is uh, is the six six cylinder model, three litre six cylinder. And it's got an, um, an auto, automatic gearbox. Set up nicely, set up for tearing. Get him slide in that huge rut. Good boy. He's owning it. Okay, this section here, um, in the edit, I'll, I'll get them to just replay that little bit there. 
If Troy had kept his momentum flowing through, he wouldn't have had to stop and wheel spin there. So when you're off-road, you, you've got two things going. When you're moving, you've got your momentum, which is kinetic energy. The vehicle's stored up kinetic energy. It's kind of like a battery. And when you hit obstacles, you can draw down on that, that energy or, the, or that power to get you through the obstacle. The th second thing you've got is traction. At any given moment, on any given bit of track, you've got a certain amount of traction. And you, you, know, you can increase it by changing tires or, or whatever, but in the, on the day, it is what it is. So you've got traction of a certain amount and you've got the energy. Uh, the momentum. So work those two together. The moment you stop, your 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 energy battery is completely empty. You now oh that was a bit rude. Sorry, I'll keep two fingers up. <laughs> um, uh, you you've now just got your traction working. Okay, and that's why your wheel spin. Whereas if you keep keep that momentum going, you'll have that energy to contribute, and you would have got straight over that rut without any wheel spin. This is where it's going to get very neat. This is this hill is a lot steeper than it looks. Just so you know, um, I've not driven it, but look at the trees in the background. is a good way to kind of get an indication of how steep the hill is. The trees will tend to grow straight, and um, and so you know this is this has got some steepness to it for sure. A lot of wheel spin there. You've got clearance here. Uh, Wee big wheel there. Now, if he turns to his right, he'd follow the water. Watch some of my other videos where I talk about following the water technique, and that would have worked quite well there, I think. How are your engine temps, mate? Uh, 96 degrees, mate. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Man, if I was on that angle in a disco, I would be freaking out. That's the, um, that's the benefit of having a, a lower car, isn't it? A lower, smaller car. Yeah, good point. But the angles that you feel when you're in the, in the driver's seat. Mm. A lot more stable. Of gravity. It's so much lower. That's why these Subarus are just awesome. Because of that fact, um, when you're watching this video moving forward, start to think about some of the lines they've taken and other lines that could have been taken by using a lot more of their side angle. Because I, I, I can see a couple of points, I'll try to point them out to you, where they could have taken a totally different line and really sat that vehicle up on its side. It would have been stable and driven through on flat ground, but it would have just been like that. So. Keep an eye out for it. How good is his um, spare wheel carrier? It looks sick. Put that rut directly underneath you for this section. So Troy has got the driver's side window down and the passenger side window up. I always try to drop both windows. Now, they're doing a good thing. They've got the UHF radios running. I, I run a GME handheld. Um, but if you have the windows down it, as a driver, it gives you that other inputs that can be helpful. Um, you've got to be aware of what you know what inputs you're taking because sometimes there's people on the side of the track giving you bad info. But but you can certainly listen to your spotter as well. All right, All right some fitness. <laughs> How about that for an angle, guys? All right. And the worst is yet to come. I don't think your car's loud enough, Troy. Okay, new muffler. Okay, so that was good there. Troy, he's come onto the power. He's, he's really nice on the throttle. It's very, um, he, he squeezes the throttle on and that's what you want to do. You, you don't want to jab the throttle. You want to squeeze the throttle on. So he squeezes it on, then the power, it breaks traction and wheel spins and he gets off the power. That's exactly the way to do it. Because if you wheel spin in, Unless you're in mud, generally speaking, wheel spinning is not going to get you anywhere. So just back off and and have another think about what you can do. Go for it. Traction boards, how good is that? All right. This is a great bridging technique here. And a light vehicle like the Subaru. Uh, you, you do that with uh, my Land Cruiser, which you know weighs a bit over three tonnes. <laughs> it would bend it. Uh, but Traction boards are a great way of, you know, in these sort of environments, great tool, great tool. These guys use them very effectively. Nice, 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 here we go. Oh, don't go with that log. Nice. Oh, the angle. God, the camera does not do that justice. The angle is unbelievable. There you go, babe. 
How are you going? More like it. I'm actually feeling all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. You can see Troy's confidence yeah, like is coming up. Like He's starting to realise, hey, I got this. <laughs> and like, I don't mean to be bossy. No, no, it's, it, it, it's needed. It's good, mate. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be running my Subaru up against that log. Yeah. That's alright, that all right. log's helped him a bit. Yeah it is, he's kind of got grip on the log. It's like on the side of your wheel. How's this for a problem? I can't get the max tracks. <laughs> I might be able to get one out. <laughs> get off the log, Troy. <laughs> moves off the log, I'll be able to get him. Yeah. The other way That's off reverse. the log. <laughs> So sometimes when you get in these environments, you've got a lot going on. And, I, you know, Troy's forgotten that he's selected reverse and squeezed the throttle and driven backwards. Always just take, you, you do have to kind of keep your wits about you because it's easy to make the silly little mistakes like that and you could put yourself into a worse situation than you want to be. There we go, there's one. Hold there, I'll grab the tracks again. Yep. We're making progress. <laughs> <laughs> How good is it? These fellas are just having a comes, great please. day out. I love that. Here it comes. Now, pick your right hand down. And hold that. All right. Oh, how are you going to do this bloody massive rut here, though? Because he's going to bottom out, isn't he? What? Nah. I'm going to bridge him. Oh, yeah. OK. OK. Oh, here we go. You can have that again. Bridge it. Des is, Des is doing a great job uh, the with the spotting. YouTube, he's got a I'll good understanding of using here. these tread boards. OK, cool. Well, I don't know if this is going to work, but it'll be sick if it does. And it works a treat. Look at that. Yes, 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 yes. How good is that? The tracks again, mate. Yeah, yeah, good. I was about to just jump down into that. <laughs> it's like a meter and a half well, drop. It's like a dust bar. <laughs> Guess who's going to make it? <laughs> Possibly you. <laughs> we didn't have any top max tracks. I'd say no chance. We've got um, another two up there as well. Yeah. I've got three on my car and Ooh. I've got the rubber ones. Well, we've got, plenty of, we've got plenty of uh, tread boards. <laughs> just like $30,000 worth of Max Tracks just like on this hill. We conquered the Max Tracks. <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below if you've been on a trip like this with a couple of mates. I have. And it's just so much fun. Just good mates time. A good purchase there because we're going to have to put tracks for your rear wheel as well. Okay, this is, this is one of the moments where... Now, I'm not there, so I, maybe if I was there, I'd understand things differently. But when I look at this, we're, we're, we're heading up and we're going to sit hard to the left here. I, I'm sort of not sure why with the Subaru and its low center of gravity, why we're not sitting hard up to the right side, up beside Des, there's that tree root, and following that line up. Um, maybe there's further up, you can't cross over, maybe it takes you nowhere, and that's why I say I don't know. But I just feel like, well, I'm just not sure quite with the information I have why we're doing it this way. What's dragging, man? Is that your exhaust? That's just this exhaust, isn't it? I, it sounds exhausting. Yeah, you don't need exhaust. Okay. You can see that we're, we're really... These are, you know, these are some serious ruts, but yeah. roll back. Yeah, if he was sitting up to his right, to our left, that's what I'm thinking. I don't want you sliding this hole. Well, like that. Okay, there we go. I can't remember if the Subarus have limited slip diffs or anything of that nature. This is exciting. I'm going to make the executive decision for Troy's sanity to get the discovery into place with a winch. <laughs> I'm just really worried he's going to blow his transmission or his CV or something in this last bit. Okay. There we right, go. Your left wheel up on this. You'll be able to do so it. you can see there's lots of picking lines, lots of technical working out where we can put the vehicle, working it through, just taking little bits at a time, chunking it down. It, there's nothing wrong with this. Now, I know that some of you are thinking, oh, yeah, I've got my truck to walk up there. Like I say, my 80 Series, my Land Cruiser, my 105, they'll all go up this easy as. But they're doing a great well, job. Great spotting as always. They're doing a great job with the vehicles they have. They're having a whole heap of fun. And isn't that really what it's all about? I think so. So I just think credit to him. How do you feel? Stress. <laughs> he fucked us up with sliding and no one can control well, that. Well done, man. All right, so now we've got Des in his <laughs> Forester. Okay. Oh my He's God. got all the momentum going, yeah. Oh, Probably got angle. a little bit keen oh there. Oh my God, the angle. Yeah, that's a good angle. Yeah, wow. Your seatbelt's going to be locked as well. <laughs> yeah. 
This is interesting. It's sort of like... I'm wondering if Des is running an oversized tyre because the transmission seems to be working a lot. Oh! Sorry. Awesome. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> Who are we apologising to? Yeah. Just focused. <laughs> You're doing very well. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to have a go at Des, but I'm going to use this as an example of something I think we all need to be aware of. To my knowledge, what I can see there, Des isn't wearing his seatbelt. If you're doing this sort of fall driving, have your seatbelt on. The only exception to that is sometimes when you get on a really steep climb and you have to take the seatbelt off to get out of the car, your seatbelt won't latch back in. That's, you know, what can you do about it? You just got to manage that. But if, if at all possible, wear your seatbelt. Because if something goes wrong, trust me, you will come out of the vehicle and get hurt and you don't need that. So just put your seatbelts on. It's, it's crazy not to. Oh, okay, I won't disturb you, mate. Go for it. Okay, good drive. There it goes, just like that. Just like that. You can see that the Forester's yeah, doing like this that, drive yeah. easier than the yeah. Outback did. Some of that's because he's got old drain tyres. Some of that's probably experience. And I think this Forester you looks like it's probably there? modified. Yeah, and if I recall correctly, the Forester's had a little bit oh more off-road oh um, right focus than the Outback did. I can go sideways, how about that? <laughs> Got all the creative solutions. Come on. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. So you notice Des has got that left hand window down. That's great. Makes momentum, spotting momentum, and you can momentum. hear what's going on a lot better. All right, there you go. I reckon yes, he's yes, just yes, yes, yes. up. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how good's that? That's great. Well, the Desmond. well done, Des. Des, this is your go, bro. Well done, mate. <laughs> it was well done. That was a fucking good effort. Yeah. We were um, timing that. We probably both took about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. Yeah. I think Des has taken... Eight minutes, maybe. Eight. Yeah. <laughs> Let's call it ten. Woo! You're going to love it watching that back. Tell the nice people how you feel. Hot, sweaty, relieved. <laughs> All right, the last thing I want to raise is end of the hill, fantastic, and Des has got his Canadian club out. Now, I'm not going to pick on Des. He might be camped at the top of the hill for all I know. But all too often out there on the tracks, I do see people drinking whilst they're out wheeling. Now, you do you. But if you're drinking, I'm not coming wheeling with you. And that's because you're not going to be safe. And you might say, oh, I'm fine. Well, you're not. You're not even allowed to drive on the road without when you're drinking. And out here in the bush, you've got to drive at a much higher level and, and a more complex level than you do on the on the town roads and city roads. So to compromise your driving skill by drinking, in my opinion, is just foolishness, especially if you've got family and friends in the car. Like that's just next level crazy, really, in my opinion. And I've seen it all too often. So I just wanted to, like I say, I don't know, Des might be camped at the top of a hill and that was his day, day's driving was done. But if he was driving any further, I wouldn't be too keen on him having drinks at this point in time. So that's just, my little thing, I know it sounds a little bit old man and all that, but like, I just like to go home at the end of my wheeling trips, you know, and I don't like wrecking my trucks and I don't like hurting other people. So that's why I say that sort of stuff. Um, I'm all, all for having a drink, you know, but yeah. Anyway, look, I think we've all learned something from that. That was fantastic. Let me know in the comments down below what you reckon. And would have you ever owned an Outback? Would you have ever thought a Subaru Outback could do a climb like that? All right, I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.